Cavendish, the Max Missile, matches Merckx, 34 wins in the Tour de France. Mark Cavendish, one of the greatest sprinters of all time, known as the Manx Missile, dominated the sprints for over a decade, at times seeming unbeatable. But after his struggle with illness, he was never fully able to come back to his dominant form. In this video, we'll go through the remarkable career of Mark Cavendish. Mark Cavendish started cycling early. He began riding BMX at the Douglas BMX Center on the Isle of Man, also where he grew up. At an early age, he had a big determination to win and be the best. Cavendish said, I was, When I think back now, I was always on a bike. Always on a bike, on a BMX, playing with my friends. I can even remember my mum, remember my mum laughing at me. Like, she's like, you just look like you're on a Sunday stroll, you know? I said, well, if I have a bike with gears like the others, you know, maybe I can do something. And I asked, like, oh, I said, please, for my birthday, I want a bike with gears. And I got this purple rally mountain bike for my birthday and uh, went down I, straight away on one. So as soon as I geared, I was able to go from last to first. And Cavendish joined the British Cycling Academy in 2003. It was an academy for young and promising cyclists. He'd be able to train with the best, learn with the best, and become a professional cyclist. It was a great opportunity for Cavendish, and he enjoyed the style of training. During his academy years, Cav started to find a liking to track cycling. He was an explosive athlete, but he hadn't fully developed his endurance yet, so the track was a perfect fit for him. Only a few years later, in 2005, Cav would go on to winning the Madison World Track Championships with Rob Hales. It's all about this fella, Rob Hales and his partner, Mark Cavendish, the World Madison Champions. A tremendous display and celebrations have started already in the middle. There they are, the World Madison Champions, Rob Hales and Mark Cavendish. It was a big testament that he progressed so quickly. The same year Cavendish turned professional on the road, signing for Team Sparkassa. It was a feeder squad for the World Tour team, Team Mobile, which meant if he performed well, he'd be able to become a World Tour rider. Cavendish did well for the first year, winning the last stage of the Tour of Berlin, which made Team Mobile want to sign him for the coming year. In 2006, Cav rode for Team Mobile. It was a good year for him, winning a total of four stages and also the green jersey at the Tour of Britain. Cavendish kept riding on the track as well, winning the scratch race at the Commonwealth Games. He was turning out to be quite the all-rounder. However, Cav's focus was fully on the road. In 2007, Cav was ready to tackle the Tour de France for the first time. He had a good season with a stage win at the Walter Ciclista Catalunya and also winning his first Shell de Prize, one of many. His Shell de Prey win was a big moment. It was his first professional win, beating the likes of Robbie McEwen and Eric Sabol, both sprinting legends in their own rights. Cavendish said after the finish, I'm happy with the team roles this year, and this is the first time I've had a free role. I grew up respecting Robbie, and I just hope I can be the next Robbie McEwen. However, when the tour came around, Cav was out of his depth. He was struggling to stay in the correct position, and his team wasn't able to lead him out for the win. That's a little bit of panic for Mark Cavendish there. He's got to stay calm and get back into this race. He was, however, able to get two top 10 places, but wasn't ever close to winning. It was a good learning experience for him, and for the 2008 season, Cav was truly ready for the Tour de France. Being signed for a new team, Team Colombia, a team with a dedicated leader train for him, it was time to show what he was made of. That tour was the Tour de France people truly became aware of Cavendish. That year he earned the name the Manx Missile due to his insane speed in the sprints. It was a dream season for Cavendish, but it was only the beginning. Cav's dominant form continued into 2009, winning a total of 13 stages before the Tour de France, including his first monument, Milano San Remo. Cavendish has had to go early here, and this is a real dice around the road, but to Hausler, he really is a German, but he's well known in Inverell in Australia, and Cavendish gets him on the line. Well, I'm, I can't believe he got him there, Paul. I thought Hausler had that, 
uh, but he's got him on the line and if he has won it and that's the first British win since Tom Simpson I think we go back 45 years this meant Cav was not only a pure sprinter but he could also hold his own when it got tough on the short hills for the Tour de France Cav was a favorite to win the sprint stages and on stage two he showed everyone he was here to dominate he beat Tor Husoft, Fabian Cancellara and the others it was a perfectly executed lead out and Cavendish won easily. The next day it was Deja Vu, a perfect lead out from the team and Cav was able to win the sprint. That made some people believe Cav was unstoppable in the sprints. Cav would go on to win stages 10, 11, 19 and also stage 21. A very special stage, the very last day of the tour and also known to many as the Sprinters World Championships. Every sprinter's dream is to raise his arms on the Champs-Élysées. It was another perfectly executed lead out with his right hand man, Mark Renshaw, a sprinter good enough to fight for the win himself. This is Mark Renshaw, the fastest lead out man in the business and there's the missile, he's locked onto his wheel now. This is going to be a formality, win at number six for Mark Cavendish. There's nobody can match the speed of this amazing kid. He has got the victory and no British cyclist has ever, ever been remotely close to winning six stages of the Tour de France. What an incredible result. It was a perfect end to a fairy tale Tour de France for Mark Cavendish. And in 2010, he continued the domination. He won a total of five stages, including that iconic last stage in Paris once more. As Tor Hushoff breaks for the line, now where is the Max Missile? There he goes, over the top, somebody just launched him, and forget it because Mark Cavendish is streets ahead of the Tour de France when he comes to a sprint finish, and Pataki comes over in second place. He also won three stages in the Vuelta Espana that year. He was at his peak during these times. However, there was one thing he wasn't able to do. That was to win the green jersey. Before the 2011 tour, the UCI, the governing body of cycling, had changed how the points classification worked as they deemed that the best sprinter hadn't won the green jersey, that being Cavendish. It was a big statement changing the rules and some riders weren't too happy about it. Cav was a pure sprinter so he was unable to take sprint points on Helia Mountain days which a rider like Tor Husoft was able to do. But with the changes there was a lot more bonus points for the winner of the sprint stages. It was a close battle for the green jersey but with Cav's five stage wins he was finally able to take home the green jersey. It was a big moment for him and it cemented his legacy as a sprinter. In 2012 Cav was riding for Team Sky, a team with one pure goal of winning the Tour de France. It was the first time in a long time Cav was not the main rider. However he said in interviews it was okay that he wasn't being prioritized for the tour. When the tour started, Cav got a dream start, winning stage three. It looked to be another incredible year for him. However, on the next sprint stage, Cav was unable to win. He didn't have a dedicated lead out, which made it difficult for him to properly launch his sprint. So at the end of 2012 tour, he only had three sprint wins. This may seem like a lot, but considering how dominant Mark Cavendish had been, it felt like he was falling off slightly. However, he still managed to win the elusive Champs-Élysées stage, which was a record-breaking fourth time in a row. For 2013, Cav once again switched teams. He enjoyed riding for Team Sky, but he didn't enjoy not being the main rider and having a dedicated team around him. So he switched to Omega Pharma Quickstep, a team much more focused on sprints and one day classics. When the tour came around, he seemed to struggle more though, seeing himself being beaten in the all out flat sprints a few times, even with a perfect lead out. He only managed two wins and he even got beat on the Champs-Élysées by rising sprinter Marcel Kittel. It was the first poor year by Cavendish standards and many believe it could be the end of Cavendish's pure domination in the sprints. In 2014, Cav wanted revenge. His lack of wins in the tour wasn't good for him and he wanted to win and wear the yellow jersey in England 
were the tour would start that year. It's all right, it's hard. Tour's getting hard, very hard, but uh, that's okay. I'm in a position now, I'm no longer nervous about making it to Paris, you know. And obviously the first one in Harrogate, my mum's hometown, and uh, it'd be nice to try and get the yellow jersey again. However, he tried too hard and crashed into Simon Garrons, ending his race in despair. It was the first time since 2007 that Cavendish didn't win a stage in the Tour. The next year, Cav was able to finish the Tour, but only with one stage win. His team was still dedicated to him, but he just wasn't as fast as he used to be. It was very disappointed for him, and he also blamed the team for his lackluster performance, which made his boss Lefebvre not want to resign him for the coming year. In 2016, Cav was different. He had switched to Team Dimension Data. A team not as well established as Quickstep, a team where Cav could be more free. He also had his old trusty lead up men, Bernie Eisel and Mark Renshaw in the squad. The two would help Cav dominate back at Team HTC Columbia. It was time to show the world that Cavendish was back for real. This was a big moment and it felt like after those lackluster years at Quickstep, he was finally back to full form and it was truly amazing to see. However, the next year disaster struck. Cav was diagnosed with Epstein-Barr virus in April of 2017. He had an otherwise good start to the season, but the rest of the year was a bit of a letdown, especially due to a controversial crash with fellow sprinter Peter Sagan in the Tour de France that ultimately saw Peter Sagan disqualified from the race. Same story the next two years, he only managed an 8th place at his best in the Tour de France. This was devastating to Cav, and he was now over 30, and many thought that due to his illness, his glory days were now truly over. But Cav wanted to keep fighting. He had one goal in mind, become the rider with the most stage wins at the Tour de France, beating Eddie Merckx's long-standing record of 34 wins. In 2020, Cav was still performing under his standard, with no major wins under his belt and also not racing the Tour de France. His new team, Bahrain McLaren, didn't believe he was good enough to race the Tour de France, which was disappointing for him. Cav's career was looking like it was going to come to an end. He even stated himself back in an interview in 2020 that he was over. I see you're getting emotional. How, how was your day? That's perhaps the last race in my career now. a little bit. Do, do you really think this is your last race? Maybe, yeah. He would end his impressive career with a total of 30 stage wins at the Tour. An incredible feat, but not the best. Something that Cavendish always wanted to be. However, in December of the same year, Cav would make an announcement. He wanted to come back racing and he'd be back at Quickstep. He was not going to retire. It came as a surprise to the public and no one thought he'd be able to bounce back after 2020. But Cav is Cav, and Cav came back at quick step. He was back with a vengeance. His first real success in 2021 was at the Tour of Turkey, where he dominated winning four stages and being in top five three times. However, Cav wasn't meant to ride the Tour, as Lefebvre believed he needed more time to get better. But as one of the riders got an injury, it opened a spot at the Tour for Cavendish. Q Stage 4. It's a flat sprint. He's got the wheel of Jasper Philipson, and in the last 50 meters, he sprints around him to win the stage. It's win number 31 in the bank, but for Mark Cavendish, it was one of the most special wins, as he didn't even believe he'd ever be back racing at this level at the Tour. He'd go on to win another three stages before the last stage in Paris loomed. This was the chance to beat the record on the Champs-Élysées, the stage was set. He was in a good position to win before the last corner and it looked like it would be a fairy tale ending, but sadly for Cavendish, it wasn't the case. He got boxed in and the dream for the 35th win and the record on the Champs-Élysées wasn't to be. It was a huge disappointment for him. Even though his comeback was simply remarkable, it wasn't record breaking. Last year started well for Cavendish, winning stages Eddie in the Tour Roman. It's Mark Cavendish, first win of the season. UAE Tour, 
jersey at the line. Mark Cavendish makes it his own. And the Gio di Italia. Cavendish was on fine form, continuing his sprint. Nobody was able to get around him. It all looked like he would get another shot at the stage win record. However, Lefebvre did not select him and it stirred feelings for many top journalists. He wasn't even told personally and it was all over social media. I think the manner in which he found out about this non-selection was, I'll be honest, disgraceful. Any rider who isn't picked for the tour should be told on a phone call, in my opinion. He's done so much for that team. Matt Stevens on Cavendish not being selected. We'll see how many years Cavendish has got left in him, but considering how many times he's been able to bounce back when the world thought that he was done, even when he thought he was done, there is no doubt they'll be back at the Tour de France one last time. His new team Astana has taken him under his wings and with a top three finish on stage one at the Tour of Oman, this year he's shown he's still one of the greatest sprinters of all time.